everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California, and I'm in my new garden that I absolutely love. All I wanted to say right now is the video you're gonna see, I did four days ago. I came out here to have a cup of coffee, and all these thoughts were going through my head, so I went ahead and grabbed my camera that I try to carry with me all the time, and I did a little something on this garden before it was even built up, and I'm still slowly building it. What I'm trying to do is get a container done every day, so I'm more than halfway through. I love this so much that I'm pretty sure I will be tearing apart the front yard and redoing it. This has been a game changer for me. It will be a game changer for me. And I know anybody can do it. I literally, after I do all my gardens, come in here and I'm done in minutes. I know they're not set up, but I can spend time in here and do what I want. It's so easy to take care of and to maintain, but we'll get into that as time goes on. You've had such wonderful comments and questions on painting totes, of course, and when the best time to paint them. We'll get into that. There's so many things. Drainage. I don't want to get into all that now because I want you to see what I did four days ago and I will be back today or tomorrow or whenever with more. Absolutely everything needs drainage. It's up to you where you put the holes. It's up to you how far up you put the holes. We're going to be, for the next few days, starting I think tomorrow, over 100 degrees. Could be 110. So we've got a heat wave coming up. So I grabbed some um, shade cloth, and this is from Gary's Garden. He had it in a pile, and I was experimenting, but I've got better ideas, and that's what I like to share with you, my better ideas. <laughs> I share it with you both. If, it, if I don't like it, I let you know or whatever. But that worked, but now I gotta redesign it. But everything is doing so good. I can't believe how fast the zucchini is growing. But I'm gonna get into details a lot on this video. We're gonna have more because this is no joke. I can see myself tearing apart the front yard, redoing one of these, something I can go in. I'm tired of walking through mazes. Now I'm not gonna do anything to my main garden with the birds because that is set up like a food forest for the birds. But this is set up for me except for the hummingbird that decided I put this up and I put a little feeder up here and he's been buzzing my head right now he's sitting above me because he wants me to fill it which I will go do so enjoy this video that I did sitting out here four days ago with a cup of coffee and watch my garden grow and I expect if you've got room for this and you can make it any size you want you can have three chairs the same way. You can have dozens of chairs the same way. There's so many ways of doing it. So many more ideas on this method on how to do it. We'll get into more later. Enjoy this video and watch this garden grow. Hello everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I came out here to have a cup of coffee. Do a little bit of watering before it gets too hot. And I thought, you know, there's been a lot of really great questions and I think we're gonna be talking about the chairs for a very long time. If you do the chairs, I don't like saying the way I want you to do it, but if you think about it strategically, how you're going to set this unit up, this is, let's talk a little bit about the chairs and I'll walk over to the squash and we had a question on potatoes. If you do it by thinking about it, I think you're going to be so excited and so happy that you're going to be setting this system up everywhere and getting your friends to do it. I am still in the process of setting this up and I am giving it a lot of thought. Let's go over here. Watermelon. I've got a watermelon I started and you know how I like to layer. This is just a pot sitting here and this has got a little walking onion in the center there. Can't see it yet but it's a little bulb I picked up in the garden. Now the watermelon, I could do that kind of a few different ways. I could trellis it up because it's one of those little tiny watermelons or I could let it just take off and go all along the top of the totes. I could stake it with tomato steaks. There's a lot of different things. So we'll see as time goes on what I'm going to do. See how it's all dripping? I've been collecting this. You know how I make the totes. They've got all kinds of yard waste in here, kitchen scraps, which is still yard waste because it's peels from things like papaya and, and zucchini and different squash and whatever we've got. That all goes in there. And then when it leaches out, look at this. Greatest compost tea. I had some problems in the truck bread. Uh, there was a couple squash there that 
uh, just weren't growing. And I started taking this two days ago and putting it on there and they just took off. So they needed a boost to something and that's all it is. It's just basically free compost tea from your garden. Here is a tomato. Now this tomato, like all tomatoes, are going to go up. So if you think about this, see I kept space here, but just a small amount of space because I really wanted to keep this thing really compact. These are 18 gallon totes on these chairs. Tomato goes up, squash goes wide. And that can work for you, especially if it's summer when you're planting in and, and the heat of the fall. Because as the squash goes wide, it could slightly cover a little bit of those totes, the big, big leaves. That could be beneficial for the tomato plant as far as covering the soil here and keeping this cool as the tomato plant goes up. So growing this way, you will want to stake it. You could put a tomato cage in there. You could put stakes. You can control the size you want by trimming it, whatever you want to do. But you want one tote up and one tote wide. So I wouldn't really want to put another squash in here because even though their root system will not be fighting, so they'll just take off and grow. You put too many squash in a tote and their root system will be fighting. You'll end up with smaller plants, possibly, possibly less fruit, but this has no competition at all. The only thing is they may be growing into each other, which could be, let's say, a pain for you, you know, and you may not want it that way. So what I'm going to do and then I tell you that and then I change my mind, but it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go up, down, up, down, up, down. So here I've got a zucchini and I'm going to say in a system like this, the best way to really do this is keep from getting runners. Your other squash like spaghetti squash, your pumpkins, they run. I mean, you've seen it. They're running over there. See, they just take out of the tote and take off. Now, that's not saying you can't do that. Because if you've got it in a yard where you don't care and you're not dealing with critters you're trying to keep from climbing up like ants or small pests or if you don't have a dog that's running through it, then you can put your runners on the ends, drop them down and let them just take off in your yard. That's not a problem. I'm going to do this one differently, I hope. I hope that the seeds grow the way I want them to grow. So this should be not a runner and this should be just the zucchini that unwinds and stays there and you can always trellis them. If you want to do something that is a run runner, you can trellis them up. I could put other plants in there. I could do cucumbers. Cucumbers go up. I can direct them the way I want. I could do a more watermelon. I could do parsley. I could do peppers. Peppers go up. So I can have a good pepper plant here, another zucchini here, tomato here, okra here, because okra goes up. So think about that when you're setting this system up, that you want up, down, up, down, just for easy maintenance. You can grow it any way you want. You want to make this whole thing nothing but zucchini, you can do that. You want to make the whole thing with just tomatoes, you can do that. When it comes to watermelon, because it's a vine, I will be growing other things in here, probably walking onions. I love walking onions. Those are very similar to what you buy in the grocery store that looks like green bunching onions, just the green onions. I only use the green top, but the walking onions have a little tiny bulb, and you can use that too, but once you pull it out, your plant's gone. If you only take the greens, then you can have that plant for many years, so it's up to you. If you've got hundreds of walking on onions all over your yard, then it won't matter. You can use the whole thing. The whole thing is edible. It produces a baby onion on top during certain times of the year and they tend to do it in my yard twice a year they produce baby onions so you could take those babies off and replant it which I did in there I took, I don't know if we can see it I found it in the yard a little young but it's gonna yeah, see it's right there okay that is a baby walking onion and it's gonna come up on its own okay? and I'm gonna have walking onions in that pot that I can move the pot the reason I like layering is it keeps water in that tote, even if it dried out in the heat today, let's say 90, 95 degrees, it'll always be damp underneath anything you lay you know, as far as pots on top, even rocks. Put some statues in there, do the same thing. And when you lift it, it would be damp under there because it can't evaporate. So it holds the water underneath the pots and then your tomato, like this tomato here, would be able to always have some water under that pot. It's evaporation if you're in the heat. You need drainage in everything. 
I get that question so much. Do you have to put holes? Yes. Because if you, if you get a rainstorm and you're not really diligent on how much water you're putting in there and that thing gets halfway full of water, you're going to rot your plants. A lot of plants don't want to be that wet. Tomatoes don't want to be that wet. They want it to drain. You're not growing celery with mine. Celery will just, it's like a water plant. Celery would just take off. Another thing you can grow in here. So everything has to have drainage. But it's up to you on where you want to put the holes. If you're in an area where it just keeps raining and raining and raining, it's so wet, then you want to put the holes as close to the bottom as possible. For this system, as you can see, I am directing the water where I want it to go. It's going to go in those pots right now. And I may change up as time goes on. I may put some mint in pots underneath and catch it that way. But right now, I've been catching it to rewater the plants because of the compost tea coming through there. So I'm using it that way. But yes, you could put plants on the bottom. Simple, any flower pots, when you could grow flowers down there, you could grow mint, you can grow herbs, you can grow anything you want. You can grow another tomato plant on the bottom if you don't care. This whole idea is to keep critters out and you'd be able to put stakes and stake things up. You'd be able to put stakes and put shade over it by yourself, one person, me. I ordered some sun sails and I'll see if I need it. They're cheap, I found them online for like $22. And I could put a couple stakes in a couple of these totes and I could put a sail up or some uh, shade cloth. That easy. This whole thing is easy to maintain by one person. I look at this and I see a community garden. I see people living in a big apartment complex that have a little yard. Talk to your landlord and get together with some of your friends in the apartment and you could have a community garden say, hey, I only need an area that's like 10 by 15. You think he's not gonna give it to you? And if there's no hose, I do have a hose here, then watering cans and catch the water. If you're worried about mosquitoes, after you maintain it, then put a plate on top so nothing can get into it. That would be that easy. No mosquitoes will get in there. But if you've got plants underneath, then you could be growing, like I said, plants underneath. You won't even have to worry about it. It will drain out. This can be on cement, blacktop, grass. We're actually here on eight inches of wood chips. So I may sink a little. Normally it won't, but it's doing really good. I put a couple plates. My mother said, I have ice cream lids. Can you make something out of the ice cream lids? No, but you need them. No, mom, I don't need them. Yes, you need them. So she saved me her ice cream lids. Guess what? <laughs> I ended up using them. See, mom knows best. I put them under the legs and I've got them under there and I've got them under there because now I've created a flat surface so those chairs can't sink into the eight inches of wood chips here. You won't be dealing with wood chips. You've seen Gary's piles of wood chips. So I think all in all, this is going to be the best setup ever. I mean, this small area has got 11 totes in here. 11 totes. That wool that you're seeing that I have to service, drag a hose down, get in there, maintain, take the browning leaves off, take them away or drop them back in there. That's not 11 totes. That's not even as many plants as I'm gonna be able to grow here. So keep that in mind. This teeny area is gonna grow more food than that area there. Now see how big and bushy some of them get? Now these are not zucchini. There's a zucchini here, which has not run. Let's walk over here so you see what I'm talking about. You can see that great big zucchini, see over here, that I've got to get off because really should not leave it that long, even though I make the just roasted zucchini is so good. See how it hasn't left? This is how wide you're dealing with zucchini. It's just leaves, and then of course you can trim off the leaves that are no good. This is it. This is it. So that same size tote that's on the chair, see how much space it needs? It doesn't need much at all. That zucchini would work 100% perfect on those chairs. Now these are kabochas and spaghetti squash. See how they're running? You can drop them off the chair if you're not dealing with critters and you're not caring about things taking off on the ground. But those are runners, so you wouldn't want that. Here's another one. I'm not sure what this is. Let's take a peek and see. Oh, no, no. This is kabocha. So kabocha is leaving. So if you don't care, it's a, it's a squash plant kabocha and it's sweet when you bake it up like a sweet potato. See, that's going to leave. So you want to stick with something like zucchini. See here again, here is zucchini. This would work perfect on the chair. 
I've got a tomato plant in here with the zucchini. You can do it, but you have to make sure you feed them well because both of those, tomatoes and zucchini, are heavy feeders. You feed them, it won't matter. If you want to do it that way, you can. But I think in this setup with the chairs, it would work better to have a zucchini and maybe something else, walking onions, garlic chives. Uh, celery gets a big root system, but you could put celery, anything you like. You could put something else with the zucchini. You can do two zucchinis. In these, I've done it. My daughter said she's doing six, but she must be feeding them to do that many. And she's got spaghetti squash coming out of one of these totes all over her yard. You just have to make sure you're making a lot of compost tea and feeding it and it will grow because again, it's only an annual. Once it's done, it's done. So I think I've answered a lot of questions on that, but see, that's a big difference. That zucchini only goes from there to there. That's perfect. That would work perfect on my chair. And then, of course, like I said, you grow a tomato and anything else. Anything else. Okay, eggplant. We're struggling. I think it needs a good trimming. You can get colored totes. You want more color? Order colored totes. Here is a setup I wanted to do just to show how you can do a color system if you wanted to work with things. I haven't set this up yet. I'm debating when or what I want to put in here. So, see, I can take my time. Look how far I've got to walk. And there's the whole setup for the garden. I can have an entire garden in that section. Your neighbors will be so jealous if they come over and see that. It's like, how are you growing so much in a small area? See, I've got here layering. Something's eating this. I think it's the birds, but it could be. There might have been caterpillars on here. And the birds might have come to get them because I can't find anything. But right now it's just working as a layer. It's in a pot. And then I've got the tomatoes. And the soil sunk way down. I didn't put that much soil in there. So you're going to put more or you just let it do its thing and then compost the whole thing and start over and just build on top again. So there, there again is the tote. See how the tomatoes are going to go up? And there's two tomato plants in there. You can do more than one. Again, zucchini with a tomato back there. I have a reason why I'm doing this. I'll talk about that in a second. That will probably be a winter video. But there's a reason why there's a tomato plant in there. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay, this is potatoes. I had somebody ask me, how do you know when the potatoes are done? This is plain old white potato, like russet potatoes from the grocery store. See they're flowering, the flowers have closed up. As soon as the plant starts to die back and starts to show that it's done, it's browning, and this is probably a couple potatoes, that's when you're gonna go in there and start checking. You find potatoes and then you start just clearing it out. You clear out the potatoes, keep the ones you wanna grow, and of course store the ones you wanna eat. And that's how simple, see? Look at this. You've seen this so many times. There's what, more, uh, about 11 totes going all the way down there to here. Look at all the space I've got to take care of when I can do it in that circle over there, that horseshoe, that keyhole garden in one spot. Look at that. Look, look how much room I need, nothing, to grow the same thing that's down here. The only thing I would do different, like I said, in control is the type of squash you want to grow. And these, again, are kabochas, they're spaghetti squash, they're little dumplings, which is a small squash, and they do run. You know, that's the only thing you have to think about. Do you want runners? If you don't want runners, you're perfect. And like I said, you still can. If you have no dogs running around or, well, the dogs don't really bother the squash that much, but if you had critters that you thought might bother it, which I do, and nothing's bothering the runners. You can be having runners take off all around there. So that's up to you. Again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm trying to give you ideas, and then you have to think about what's going to work better in your situation. Going back to this that I want to talk about later, and I've done this before, I have a squash in here and a tomato plant. And then you saw the squash and the tomato down there. The reason I have squash with the tomato plants, the tomato plant right now is going to kind of be stunted. This is my kind of hopes. It's going to kind of get a root system, but it's going to be stunted in the tote because the squash is drawing all the nutrients it can because they're so vigorous as far as pulling from the soil. So even that tomato plant down there, and I'm going to drop a few more in here, Hopefully the tomato plant is going to grow really slow. That is my hopes. Because this wall in the winter 
even when it's cold, stays warm. The squash will be fairly done by then. Sometimes I get squash growing all the way to December into January, and they'll be kind of like just lingering on and throwing a few squash, that would be good. But if they die back, that's when the tomato will take off. The moment the squash is really done and it dies back, I don't even have to come back and replant. The tomato plants just take off. I had that in the truck bed a few years ago where I had tomato plants dotted through. I didn't do that on purpose. I wasn't that smart. No, what happened was the tomato plants came up in my compost in place because I compost right in with where I'm growing and they were kind of dotted all over so I left them. When the spaghetti squash all died back, I'm trying to think when, that probably would have been October. The tom as soon as the spaghetti squash died back, all the tomato plants took off. It was amazing. This whole thing was a forest of tomato plants and we had tomatoes. It created, I guess, its own heat because it's out in the open all winter. So that's what I'm hoping on the wall. I want to have the squash when it's time to die back with a tomato plant in there already with a great root system. And then the squash dies back. I'll add in the squash leaves, the dry leaves there make some compost tea out of whatever leaves I want. And maybe I'll put some potting soil in there. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll put some native soil in there. Maybe I won't. But by then, if all works out, that tomato plant will just take off for the winter. So I'll have tomatoes all winter. One other question that was good that somebody asked, and there's a whole bunch of them, and I know I have to go through them. Will the worms find the chairs, or do you have to add them in? I always try, if I can, add in a little bit of native soil. I'm not technically looking for worms, but I add in some native soil and usually there seems to be earthworm eggs and stuff in there because they take off. If you do not block and try to stop ants and try to stop snails, because you can stop ants and snails on this and slugs, if you're not blocking them, then your earthworms will at night crawl up and they will find it. They'll find the dampness and they'll find their way in. The best way to get a few earthworms in there is simply take a pot. It doesn't matter where the you know where you put the pot, except it has to be on soil. Get a pot with holes on the bottom, like a flower pot. Sit the flower pot, and when you move the pot, it's not damp here. You will find that there's earthworms. Dig out some of the soil under the pot and take that handful that you get from under a pot and just toss it in there. Make a little hole in your soil here. Just make a little hole, dump it in there, and then cover them back. Weed, no, it wasn't a weed. And you know what, if any weeds come in here, that's fine, because that's gonna go back and be part of my building soil. I build my own soil. So I am very excited on this, and I hope I've given you ideas. Think about your yard and your situation. Think about where you can put it. And if you are a teacher and they give you access for a little bit of property to make a garden at school, if they go to school this year, I don't know, all the schools are different all over. You could build this for a classroom and you could have two or three kids maintaining one tote and look how easy it is that they learn the responsibility of when they come through here and take care of their tote and their little garden, their mini garden, they can quickly go through if needed and water the rest. Literally take them less than two minutes. So with that, I'm still working on this. I'm still trying to think of what I'm going to grow in here. I'm so excited with this. And I hope I've answered a lot of questions and I know I haven't answered all. I haven't even barely broken the surface for all, but I will keep going on this. And I'm going back to work in my new garden. I love it. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.